Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. An exciting one here today as we're going to be talking about jet fuel and more specifically kerosene. We're going to compare the amount of energy that we get in 3.7 liters of kerosene versus a lithium polymer battery pack. Now the reason why we are going to compare 3.7 liters is because this is the exact tank size that is in this specific jet. 3.7 liters of fuel fuel gives me about five to seven minutes of run time, leaving me with enough fuel to make a few go arounds if I need them and then landing safely. So where does that leave us today? How many battery packs is it going to take to equalize the 3.7 liters of jet fuel? Now, before we jump right into it, I do want to thank all of my Patreon supporters for your contribution. We got another battery pack video coming out very shortly within the next couple weeks. I'm just trying to swap over connectors and then recording the video and then editing through that. And I'm hoping two weeks and we should see that video. So now let's jump right into the details of comparing the energy within our jet fuel. When we look at 3.7 liters of fuel, every single liter of jet fuel has 33 megajoules of energy. And this is kind of significant because that value is certainly a lot. And we'll get into what that means here shortly. When we look at a lithium polymer battery pack, what we're gonna do here in this video is we're not gonna use just a four cell or an eight cell or even a 12 cell. We're gonna jump all the way up to 16 cells. And the reason for that is because we need quite a bit of power in order to move a larger jet along. And we're gonna use that as our baseline. And not only are we gonna use 16 cells, we're gonna use 8,000 milliamp hour. Now this is a really good size battery pack in order to move any type of radio control vehicle along. You're gonna be able to get a lot of power out of that battery pack as well. Another assumption that we're making here is that we're completely using all of the jet fuel that we have on board and we're completely using all of the milliamp hour of capacity in our battery that we have on board. Now why that's important is because that's obviously not realistic. We never want to do that. And in fact, if you do this with a battery pack, you're going to get yourself into trouble and you're going to be burning through a lot of money. So when we take our 16 cell at 8 amp hour, we're going to get 1.7 megajoules. That's 1.7 million joules of energy. Now that's quite a bit far off compared to the 33 megajoules that we get from our one liter of fuel. Now comparing that, we get about 122 megajoules. When you multiply that by the 3.7 liters that we're gonna have on board. Now if we had an unlimited supply of lithium polymer battery packs, and of course they weighed nothing, we would have to have 72 of our 16 cell eight amp hour packs in order to equalize the amount of energy that this jet fuel actually has. Now I thought about this here, comparing the 72 packs that we would otherwise have in lithium polymer format versus our one single tank of jet fuel. And there's a big thing within these two power systems. When we end up using our jet engine, we're wasting a lot of energy. And that energy that I'm talking about is essentially heat. We get nothing out of the amount of heat that we generate. It's lost energy that escapes and enters into the atmosphere. When we talk about our lithium polymer battery pack, we don't have as much waste heat in that system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you here the efficiency levels. Now I looked up for a typical turbojet exactly how much propulsive efficiency that we get from that specific engine and it works out to be somewhere around the 20 to 30% mark. Now what I did here is I made a calculation on our website here and you can see that right here when we go and take the amount of power you can see the system that we ended up producing here and we get a certain amount of amperage and we know the voltage here. You can see how much power this is is actually making. And when we look at the efficiency of the overall system there, it comes in 30, 63, 65 percent efficient for the overall system. Now, what I wanna do here is I wanna just drop that down to an even 60% and for the jet engine, I wanna use 20% and compare those two values. So now when we'll use those percentages, we're now going to multiply the original energy factor that we had by these percentages. And if we do that for the jet engine there burning jet fuel, we have about 24.4 megajoules of energy now with that 20% efficiency factor. And for our 100 120 millimeter EDF 
system, we're gonna have 1.02 megajoules of energy there. Now looking at the equalizer here, we got one tank of jet fuel essentially equal to 24 of these 16 cell eight amp hour packs. That's still kind of mind blowing how much more battery pack energy we would need in order to actually equalize out the energy there. Now what I want to do here is go a step further and bring back that 120 millimeter EDF calculation that we just did. I want to show you here what we're, what we're actually accomplishing with these two systems. If we look at our turbo jet burning the fuel in the 3.7 liter tank, we have a thrust there that is going to be equal to 100 newtons and the exit velocity of the exhaust gases is going to be 300 meters per second. As compared to our 120 millimeter EDF where we're looking at about a, just shy of 120 newtons. So we actually get more static thrust there and our exit velocity of the air that comes off the fan blades is gonna be 112 meters per second. Now the power output, if you look at a simplified version of the actual exhaust output of that turbo jet versus the fan output of the EDF, we're looking at power output of 19 kilowatt for our turbojet versus 6.7 kilowatt for the 120 millimeter EDS. And the big reason why we have a massive difference there between the two is because the turbojet just has so much wasted speed. We got all this energy that contributes to a very, very high exit velocity. 380 meters per second is well above the 1,000 kilometer an hour mark, and none of our radio controlled vehicles are gonna go anywhere close to that type of speed. So we're wasting a lot of energy, and that's why I made the video, maybe a couple videos ago where I talked about, you know, it'd be really cool to see if one manufacturer out there would make a turbofan type engine for us RC modelers. Now let's take a look at the actual amount of time that we get out of each one of these setups. We get about 11 minutes with the turbojet and that's of course using every last drop of fuel. That's actually not possible because the clunk in the tank will not be able to get every single drop. It's obviously not realistic, but for the sake of the calculation, this is what we're doing, trying to keep things as even as possible. And for the sake of the 120 millimeter EDF, we're gonna get a time there of 2.74 minutes. And of course there are you know challenges with that time as we spoke about before. We can't deplete our battery pack. And if we try to, even the last bit of time, we're not gonna be at anywhere close to maximum power. We're gonna be down quite significantly in the amount of power that we get out of that specific setup. So we're not gonna be making 120 Newtons of thrust and we're not gonna have an ex exit velocity of 112 meters per second. It's gonna be well below those two marks. Now the fuel weight, this is kind of interesting because we look at the amount of weight that that 16 cell eight amp hour battery pack would be. You'd be looking at about 3.82 kilograms of weight for that specific battery pack setup. Even with this setup, comparing the two sources of fuel, we are still far behind the potential and the capabilities of a turbojet engine burning that 3.7 liters of kerosene. Now what I wanna do is flip things over to a dream setup. This is a dream setup because this is gonna be highly impractical where you cannot do it. If we take our 16 cell setup and pretty well equalize the amount of runtime that we get, we're gonna end up with needing 32 amp hours. That gives us a total amount of energy of 6.8 megajoules, which is still very far off from the 122 megajoules that the kerosene is going to have for that 3.7 liter tank. Multiply that by our efficiency, we're comparing 24 megajoules versus about four megajoules of energy. And the equalizer there is we would need six of these specific battery packs to equal out the amount of energy we get from that kerosene after efficiency of these two systems. The big difference here is now we're going to be jumping up to 11 minutes, which is just barely shy of where that 3.7 liters of fuel is going to get us. Now the obvious and very big problem here is that a 32 amp hour 16 cell battery pack is going to weigh a crap ton. We're going to have a massive weight here and we're looking at 15.26 kgs. That is well over 30 pounds of weight and it's simply not possible. This is more than the actual plane full of jet fuel actually weighs. So you could see obviously these things don't quite make sense, but it's very interesting to see how much battery pack it would take to actually equal out the performance that we get from burning kerosene at 3.7 liters with our turbojet engine making 100 newtons of thrust. 
Now keep in mind, we did compare that the battery pack is actually gonna be losing energy as it's being used, which is going to drop the overall amount of power output that we get from that specific setup. This is not exactly true for our turbojet. Our turbojet is going to be able to maintain the same amount of power all the way essentially to that last drop if it could in fact pick that last drop up and of course burn it. It is absolutely mind blowing to me to see the difference that all of the kerosene has versus battery pack technology here in 2024. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. I hope you learned something new in this video and just to see the actual comparison of the two different fuels here that we're talking about. As always, like the video if you do, don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next one.